Hey, I'm Daryl Leary, <clears throat> broadcasting from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And this is what I'm working on. I'm working on the largest picture slideshow on YouTube. And uh, it's a bit complicated. There's not many programs. Um, I don't think there's any slideshow programs that can... Um, uh, render 15,435 pictures into a video um, without coming up with some kind of error. So <clears throat> I have to resort to batch processing. Uh, you might wonder what batch processing is. Well, batch processing is using simple computer programs that uh, execute a simple operation at a time. And by using batch processing programs, um, you can process uh, an extensive amount of files, a huge, huge amount of files, because the, because the the program isn't uh, being burdened by uh, executing a huge amount of operations at the same time. So. To make the largest slideshow on YouTube, what I have to do first is, hey Alex, how you doing? Is I have to, I'm, I'm using virtual dub to uh, complete the slideshow. But before I do that, I have to rename all the files. So I use a batch rename utility. And its simple job is to rename all the files starting from photo underscore zero 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 one and then photo underscore zero 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 two and so forth so <clears throat> I've 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 ran all the files uh, all 15,000 of them through the bulk rename utility and it successfully renamed all the files because uh, only under that type of uh, rename sequence can virtual dub um, um, open up all the files necessary. But then I come up with a second problem. Um, I need another batch batch utility, batch processing utility. So what I use is the Fastone Photo Resizer. Now. Uh, different pictures come in uh, different resolutions and different dimensions and what virtual dub can't handle is different dimensions of pictures they all have to be of the same dimension as horizontally and vertically uh, that's where the fast own photo resizer comes in what it does is I have to enter a number of variables in there uh, but the problem is different pictures are different shapes, right? Some are rectangular, some are wide. So it gives, it gives me the option to add a smart film, a smart fill. So what it will do is I've entered, for example, for Ultra 4K, I've entered the dimensions of 3840 by 2160, width and then height. So what it will do is it will create a frame, 3840 by 2160, and then it will, it will position the pictures in there, and if they're rectangular, then it will, it, it, it will add black bars to fill in the rest. So you might have a thin rectangular picture, and then it will be black on both sides, or you might have a really wide picture, and it will be black on up and down. And, and so forth. Uh, this, this program here has been running for 11 hours, 37 minutes, and 29 seconds. And it still has uh, 3 hours, 39 minutes, and 13 seconds to go uh, before it does that. Hmm. Now, the thing is, uh, with Ultra 4K, you're looking at resolutions of 3840 by 2160 which is about equivalent to an 8 megapixel picture. Yeah. That's 
that's that's that's true. Um, because to find out how many megapixels a, a a picture requires, well, you're looking at more of a six megapixel picture, six or seven megapixels. You multiply the uh, the the pixels horizontally by the pi pixels vertically, and you get your megapixel count. Um, HD, um, uh, full HD, which is 1920 by uh, 1080 widescreen, is um, which is also considered a 69 ratio, is actually two megapixels. Yes, so when you're watching HD TV, you're actually looking at a series of frames that represent two megapixel pictures in motion. So a lot of people don't realize that. And then of course, Ultra uh, 4K is is actually four times HD. So um, that means you're looking at eight megapixel pictures in frame. Uh, what is 4K? Uh, 4K is basically the resolution you can expect when you go to a movie theater and it's projected on that huge screen. That's that's considered 4K resolution. Of course, when you buy a 4K TV, that resolution is squished to the size of your 4K television, if you have a 4K television. And then, I have to run them through virtual dub. The... Um, the entire production will be about 4 hours and 17 minutes. Um, each picture at a duration of 1 second. So, <clears throat> the way I see it is that um, the largest picture slideshow on YouTube should be number one, perceivable. Meaning that you should be able to perceive and understand that you're looking at a series of pictures. And if these pictures were to be frames in a production, they shouldn't go by so quickly that you don't realize that you're looking at individual pictures. So, um, one second seems to be uh, the smallest increment because most picture slideshows, you know, run on average about uh, three seconds per picture, three to five seconds. But if I were to do three seconds per picture, I would be looking at just over 12 hours of production. Considering at one second per picture, I'm looking at four hours and 17 minutes. So, um, I think I could possibly make a production uh, at a speed of half a second per picture, I think that might be perceivable, but it'd be fairly quick. Uh, I think it not only has to be perceivable, but it has to be recognizable and appreciable. That means that you can appreciate what you're looking at and not go by so quickly that you think you saw something, but you're not quite sure what you saw. Um, if I had enough pictures... Um, YouTube allows the longest video to be 12 hours. So the longest, the most, the largest picture slow I could most likely make at one second duration would be 43,000 pictures. And that would take up the entire 12 hour allowed uh, upload onto YouTube. I already, I already have the longest 3D video on YouTube which is 11 hours, uh, 59 minutes, and 58 seconds. Two seconds short of 12 hours. So the big question comes is, should I produce this in Full HD or Ultra 4K? Um, now the issue arises, if I produce it in 4K, then the pictures would be appreciable at an 8 megapixel resolution but at the same time we're looking at four times the data to upload so I'm not sure um, which to go with and I don't have any 4k screen so I couldn't possibly appreciate um, I don't have any technology that I can view 4K resolutions at, so I couldn't possibly uh, uh, appreciate. 
this is this is another thing that that uh, people don't um, understand. You know, they buy eight megapixel cameras and ten megapixel cameras and fourteen megapixel cameras and twenty megapixel cameras, and if 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 your laptop is is an HD laptop like most are because 4K laptops are incredibly expensive right now you're looking at a screen that only provides full HD resolution 1920 by 1080 uh so that means that you can't truly appreciate the 8 megapixel uh pictures that you're taking with your camera on your laptop and a lot of people don't realize that. So you go out and you buy an expensive 20 megapixel camera. Well, guess what? You're never going to see the 20 megapixel resolution on your laptop. Unless your laptop supports it. And, and at 20 megapixels, even a 4K TV or 4K laptop is not going to show you the the full resolution of a 20 megapixel picture and then when you upload it to, to social media sites like Instagram Facebook or YouTube or whatever um, not so much YouTube uh, but but Facebook and Instagram well they cut down their resolutions right they allow uploads of like 5 megapixel pictures so you're actually losing resolution that's true so the thing that so many people don't realize is that you're wasting money on your 20 megapixel camera. It's true. Anyways. <laughs> um, it's going to take a lot of time to produce the final piece. It will probably take uh, a few hours at least. Um, at a four hour production um, and considering the processing power of my laptop I'm probably looking at eight hours to render a four hour 17 minute production <sighs> so <clears throat> this is um, this is this is this is what I've 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 been working on um, I'm also looking to <laughs> upload all my family photo pictures, all 15,000 of them, onto Google Photos. And this is going to be um, this is going to involve a lot of time. Um, there is there's really no way to push a button and just let it happen and there's there's a few problems with it uh... the first problem is that the uploads aren't se sequential they're not in order so when you upload your pictures to google photos right um, it uploads them randomly so you say you start with picture one picture two picture three picture four picture five picture six and so forth right well, it's not going to upload picture one first, and then picture two second, and picture three third. It's going to upload them randomly. So, if you try and upload a photo album onto Google Photos, they'll end up in a random order. So, Google Photos has some limitations. Because there's no option in Google Photos, you know, to order them once uploaded in sequential order according to their file name although if you click on the picture you can see the file name so that's a bit of a major drawback because the way that I index pictures is I go by year first and then month and then day and then index number because I probably because a lot of times I take more than one picture in a day and I can't have the same file name repeating itself so an example would be like 1997, uh, 05 for the month of May, uh, 23, day of 23, and then 0001 for the first picture of that day, and so forth, incrementally. <sighs> um, 
<clears throat> so what I have to do is I have to uh, another thing about Google Photos is that the photo albums only hold 2,000 pictures at a time so below that I have to open up an album first and then I have to upload small chunks because that way there'll be a pseudo order to the sequence of photos right so I have to take all of like a particular month and upload all those for that month because it will upload them in a random order but if I upload them in smaller chunks then there'll be a, 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 an order to it somewhat of an order right uh the order won't be exact to the day that the picture was taken but it it w the order will have a resolution of of a month for example right so but that takes a lot of time right uh, <clears throat> the other thing i've been working on is reshooting all my videos in uh, 3D in a green screen. So let me show you the green screen. This here is the green screen. You can see that. right so now there's there's a few issues with the green screen uh the green screen works um it works appropriately it works it it works all right um but the problem with 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 green screening for example and this is always an issue is you require a three point lighting system and i'll explain what this is I stand in front of the green screen, for example, right? I, I'm, I'm behind the green, and you turn on the light, right? That light hits me, and it creates a shadow on the green screen. Well, that shadow is a slightly different color than the rest of the green on the green screen. It's a darker green. So what you're getting is two different colors to key out when you're doing chroma keying, right? Chroma simply means color to eliminate a color or trade the color for for another color or another background right so the three-point lighting system what that does is there's there's a light at the bottom and another light on the opposite side and a light above and they illuminate the green screen right now it's it's hard to get a proper three point lighting system because what tends to happen is 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 is, is light seems to radiate almost like in a circular pattern. So um, the, there's there's intensity problems, right? So you you put a light in the bottom corner and what you get is a super bright bright green because that's where the light is the strongest. It's the strongest, the close. It's the most luminous the closer you get to the light source. So you'll get these edges that are super bright green and and the green gets lighter and lighter and lighter as the light radiates away. So you effectively eliminate these shadows, but then you have bright green and green. Right? So when they do it professionally, they have diffusers, right, that diffuse the light so you don't get any intense light spots on your green screen so I haven't quite figured out how to uh, to al back illuminate the backdrop of, of my green screen um, another issue with my green screen is the stuff that I want to do with it right so um, you know I want I want to produce another dance video where I'm green screened in 3d and uh, that way I could put myself dancing in different environments. 
The problem is, is that the, the cloth, the green screen cloth that covers the floor, well, it moves. And it's not a stable surface. It's subject to shifting and wrinkling and so forth as I'm moving around in it. And this, this is a big problem when it comes to capturing my whole body. Now, if I wanted to, I could just shoot from like my ankles up and, and, and just use the floor as it is where you won't see my feet. I mean, that's one way to get around the problem. But I'm trying to capture my entire body because once I capture my entire body, then it just opens up huge options of what, what it can and, 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 and can't do. So, that's an issue with that. Um, let's take a look around here. I've got... <clears throat> yeah, computer's working with that, so that's good. Yesterday, um, I also I also take uh, um, uh, three hundred and sixty photos of um, for Google Maps. I take three hundred and sixty photos and uh, upload them to Google Maps. And um, what these three hundred and sixty photos are is. Um, I use my 360 camera. It's got uh, two 180-degree lenses on either side, and what it does is it uh, it, it takes two pictures and it uh, stitches them together, and then you what you get is a photosphere. Um, um, it's a, it's a, it's the same thing that you can you you can use in um, in uh, virtual reality. Right, I mean, um, I can also shoot 360 video, although in a much poorer resolution. Uh, the problem with shooting 360 video is that HD isn't good enough quality for 360 video, because that HD quality, that 1920 by 1080, is actually stretched 360 degrees. Um, so you're 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 looking at a field of view on your player screen that is a multiple amount of times greater than that what you normally see on your on your on your video player to achieve good 360 video you you require at least 4K right 4K resolution uh, a lot of people uh, confuse this with uh, 3D. They think that uh, shooting 360 video equates to 3, 3D virtual reality. Well, that's not true. And the reason that's not true is that even though you're immersed in a, in a 360 environment, you know, if you're using like a virtual headset or whatever, right? And you look in every direction, and 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 you see this uh, this 360 environment that you can look around. The fact of the matter is that even though it was taken with a single lens or a single point of view, all the objects that you see within that image are from the same angle, no matter where you turn. Right. <clears throat> So virtual reality doesn't necessarily equate to 3D. You know, a lot of people think that, well, just, you know, just because you can have a viewer and you can see part of that image, you know, and another part of that image with, 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 with the 360 viewer that automatically it's, it's 3D. But you're not seeing the same objects from different angles. What you're seeing is slightly different side of the picture slightly different side of the image so 
what what I want my my ultimate dream camera is a 360 3D camera and there's one called the Views and it runs for $800 Canadian and what it actually has is it has eight cameras in one device and it has two cameras it's it's shaped like a square and it has two cameras on each side to capture a 3D image from each of those sides which it stitches together in what is a truly effective 3D 360 so you can achieve it with eight cameras um, but I don't have that kind of money so huh. What I do have is my Fuji, my Fuji Film 3D camera. I really love this camera. It's got a 3D parallax barrier screen, which means that you can you can actually look at the screen and see the image that you've taken or the video that you've taken in 3D without 3D glasses. Okay, so the huge benefit of this camera is that you it has two 10 megapixel lenses and you can take pictures, 3D pictures in 10 megapixels which is super high quality for a 3D picture not only that you can you can lower you can adjust the shutter speed to as quick as one one thousandth of a second so you can take very quick 3D pictures which is which is a huge advantage for me this is this is what the camera looks like it also employs two microphones so uh, the two microphones one one captures sound coming in from the left and one captures sound coming in from the right so it gives you truly stereo sound when you render the video um, <clears throat> and it also has a three time optical zoom and of course when taking your 3D pictures you can also adjust your ISO your which is your light sensitivity your aperture right which is the size of the shutter opening and closing um, and um, adjust your filters you know whether you're shooting in uh, fluorescent lighting or outdoor blue lighting or whatever right so these 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 are really good um, I, the the lens the lens are about as far apart as your eyes so the perception of depth is about equal to what what you perceive as depth with your own two eyes um the the problem is is that you can't get close up photos i mean close up 3d depth when you're trying to take a selfie what you end up getting is a lot of ghosting right so what it's best for is is capturing 3d depth from at least two meters away to probably a good 10 20 meters that type of thing uh... when you want to get good 3d depth uh... the farther away you're shooting the farther apart the lenses have to be right so if you're shooting mountains for example and you want to get really good 3d depth of those mountains then what you have to do with this camera anyways is is you have to go into another mode where you can take a single shot and then you move the camera over about three meters or so and it will it will, it will keep an overlay of that first shot you took and then you take your second shot and it will merge those two pictures together and the overlay tells gives you a visual cue of of how to line up those pictures right so you know like it's just because it's 3D you know like you might get uh, 3D depth you know up to a hundred meters or so but the mountains are still gonna look more or less two-dimensional 
you know. So, um, and there's 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 other other things to consider when you're shooting 3D too. Uh, uh, there's a bit of an argument of whether the lens should look straight out or if there should be a convergence, right? Because even though we have two eyes and we perceive 3D, uh, one thing that we do is we move eyes closer together or farther apart, and that's something a lot of cameras don't have, right? I, actually, no camera I know of has that, you know. So, I mean, just with any type of photography, if you look at something up close, you know, you can either have the foreground in detail and the background becomes blurry or the foreground becomes blurry and the background becomes detailed or in focus, I should say, right? That's how photography works. You can't have both the foreground and the background in focus. It's either one or the other, right? So, and you, 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 you can't really shoot on a 3D object without convergence you know that's um it's it's a limitation let's just say right um <clears throat> it takes it takes uh it takes hd video uh not full hd but uh 720 by um let me see if i can remember this uh what's it 720 by um, let's see, there's 1920 by 1080, uh, 720 by, well, it takes 720 video, but, um, it's not full HD, but it's still considered HD video, right? And the video that it takes, like the depth of it, it's just amazing, just absolutely amazing, um, but this is what I really appreciate is being able to take 3D photos at a fast shutter speed. If I want to capture my dog in 3D or something like that, right? You know, and he's always like moving around this, 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 this type of thing. And being able to take them at a high resolution. That's, that's what I appreciate most about this, this camera. And this is the camera I'm going to use to shoot some 3D footage of me dancing in front of my green screen. Um, and the three-time optical zoom is really highly effective because uh, because of the ghosting, you don't want to get too close to those 3D objects when shooting with a lens that's, you know, as far apart as your eyes. So what you have to do is you have to step back and then you use the optical zoom to zoom in on what you want to capture. And then that way you can achieve getting a close-up without going too close and getting the ghosting effect. And of course optical zoom always is superior to digital zoom because digital zoom the ca the camera simply um, increases and simply makes the pixels larger. So the resolution doesn't increase when you're using digital zoom. But with optical zoom you you're 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 zooming in but you're you're maintaining that resolution of 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 zooming in uh this camera also employs parallax adjustment and the way this works is when you take a 3D picture you're taking two pictures right one with each lens and what the parallax adjustment will do is it will move the pictures either closer together or farther apart and it will crop the edges accordingly because once once uploaded these pictures are side-by-side -side pictures right <clears throat> so uh, sometimes it's an effective control um, more often than not but when you're shooting anaglyph 3d uh, Parallax adjustment is 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 can be hugely beneficial. It can be the difference between something uh, just looking like it's 3D and something literally popping out in 3D. So uh, it's 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 strange. 3D is a bit strange, you know, because 
uh, you'll look at if you look at uh, a, a 3D color anaglyph, right? As those color anaglyphs are like the ones with like the red and the blue, you know, ghost images, and you have to put on the the red cyan glasses to perceive the 3D depth, right? Well, the amount of depth that you can appreciate from a color anaglyph doesn't always equate to the same amount of depth that that you can appreciate when you're looking at side by side uh, picture where you have to use the cross-eyed method without the 3D glasses. <coughs> now I don't completely understand why that is the case but it just seems to be the case. Um, so the parallax control on the camera is far more effective for creating like eye popping uh, color anaglyph than it is for uh, making any ap more appreciable depth with this with the side by side 3D. Um, but of course, uh, this this camera came out in 2011, and if you want to buy it brand new, it comes at a steep steep cost of one thousand two hundred dollars. Oh my God, I bought one used on eBay. For much cheaper than that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so the the video format comes out in what's called 3D AVI. Now, most 3D cameras, uh, what they do is they shoot video in side by side format in your typical 1920 by 1080. Which means that each image is actually taking up half the resolution, right? So when you're looking at like 3D HD, well, you're looking, you're not actually looking at a 3D HD image because you're looking at the convergence of both images. So you're more or less looking at half the resolution of that. Um, but this camera doesn't produce AVI, audio video interlace, in side by side format, in its in its overall video format. It produces 3D AVI, which is compatible if you have a laptop that's 3D enabled. And the 3D AVI is a format that's easily accepted through HDMI connection on the camera to your 3D TV. The issue with it is it's not compatible with YouTube. So, <clears throat> what I have to do is I have to use Stereo Movie Maker to render the footage in 3D side-by-side -side format. Which means left video on left side, right video on right side. <clears throat> and I have to upload it. I actually have to resize the video. So I actually have to resize the video you know through the resize option of the Stereo Movie Maker um, by nine <coughs> <coughs> by 960 by 960 so that it will produce a full video without the the video being compressed with a black bar on top and a black bar on bottom uh, where where it, it becomes compressed and it stretches across the screen and then I, I if I'm on the video I'll look shorter and wider at the same time so I have to resize it to 960 by 960 so it produces full full player screen video but that's still not good enough for YouTube, so I have to render it into another video editor that will resize it to the proper 16-9 six, ratio, widescreen ratio, which is the acceptable 1920 by 1080. And then I can upload it to YouTube. Uh, the problem with the Stereo Movie Maker is that it only renders 2 gigabyte uh, clips at a time. So it works out to about clips of 43 seconds of video that I have to join again later. So it's it's a bit of an issue. 
uh, it took me it took me some time to uh, figure it out. But um, overall, it works. So that's um, that's what I'm working on. I'm working on um, adding much more uh, 3D pictures onto Instagram. And uh, with with Instagram, um, what I try to do is I try to share the side by side 3D picture, but I also add within the square, right? Because Instagram only accepts squares, right? Square square uh, dimen dimensions, right? I have to add. I'll add the side by side, which will take up roughly about half the square, the side by side 3D photo. And then I'll add a color and a glyph, right? So that way people can look at the 3D pictures if they don't have 3D glasses. And if they do have 3D glasses, they can appreciate the much more appreciable 3D color and a glyph. And this has been the best way to share 3D pictures on Instagram. I have a few issues with Instagram. Uh, one of my biggest issues with Instagram is it doesn't allow you to upload 360 pictures. So when you normally take a 360 picture, um, the file itself, the picture file itself, will be 1920 by 1080. Well, it's, or, 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 no, it will be far larger than that. It will probably be about 5,000 something by, you know, 3,000 something like, like that, right? Um, the, 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 the problem is, is that because it's 360, um the the flat picture of it is 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 somewhat skewed you know it's not take it's not like taking a simple widescreen picture right so there's some natural phenomena that occurs in the picture and it makes it hard to appreciate to some level that it's a 360 picture um but then another issue arises where you can take like uh you can turn it into a little planet picture. And what that does is it takes your overall picture and it, it creates a spherical 180 degree uh two dimensional view of, of that picture on what's called the little planet format. But it's it's it, it it turns out cartoonish, you know. Uh, when you take a little planet picture, for example, uh, what you get is it looks like if I took a pic little planet picture, a, a 360 picture of myself, and I was standing in the middle of the field, right? And I took that 360 picture and converted it to a little planet format, right? Um, then what it looks like is it it looks like you can see the whole Earth. Uh, made up of the field mostly and then and then and then you would see me and I would look like this giant on this tiny little planet and it has very cartoonish type of dimensions to it right you know and and this is this is a really odd thing that you can't share 360 photos on Instagram because uh, Facebook acquired Instagram so Facebook owns Instagram and yet um, Facebook allows uploads of 360 pictures where you can use your mouse cursor and browse within the within the picture window and look through the 360, right? You can turn the picture around, up or down, whatever you wish. And yet Instagram hasn't implemented that. And with virtual reality becoming bigger and bigger and more interest being generated in it, you know, it's it's a wonder that Instagram hasn't implemented a way to upload 360 pictures. I mean, it just boggles my mind. I honestly don't know what these uh, what these Instagram what what the company Instagram is honestly doing with their time. You know, they all say they're working hard to make it even more enjoyable and a greater experience. How? What exactly are they doing? to improve their product. I mean, I don't see it, honestly. You know, unless implementing a new feature to Instagram is such a complicated process that it requires t 
tons and tons of programmers working day and night just to create a new filter. You know, for example, because you know Instagram has a number of filters, right? But, I mean, these, these companies say they really compete, and I don't see it. I don't, I don't see this hard work that they're supposedly doing and com competing in this, in this social media market. Like, I really question it, honestly, like, you know, um, <clears throat> but one thing I do like about Instagram is that if, if, if you, if you change your settings to a business profile, you can get metrics on your pictures. So you can see how many times your picture has been viewed and, and, um, uh, and and how much reach your picture has had and um and that's 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 big right because uh you always need two metrics uh two variables to determine the quality or appreciation of something right so if say the old instagram right you put a picture up there right and you get a hundred hearts on it right Wow, people really love my picture. I got a hundred hearts, right? Well, you don't know that for sure because you don't know how many people have seen that picture. Now, if a hundred and one people saw your picture and you got a hundred hearts, then you know like wow, almost everybody liked it except for one person. But if ten thousand people saw that picture and you only got a hundred hearts, well, less than one percent liked your picture. You know? So to to properly gauge something you always need two variables and that's something i really like about the business profile but the business profile is a bit lacking and it lacks in that there's not an overall tally of how many views have been accumulated by all your pictures combined you know and i think it's all about the views i mean this is why people constantly strive to upload more and more stuff onto YouTube because it's about the views. The views are currency, man. Everybody wants the most views because it's the views that dictate whether it's going viral or not, right? Um, so, so why wouldn't Instagram embrace that philosophy, right? You know, they give you the total accumulated views for one picture but not the total accumulated views for all your pictures, right? I, I figure it out by myself. I actually add them up, right? Because it will give me how many views and reach I've, re I've achieved in a week's time. And every, every week I actually update that, right? Um, as you may or may not know, I've updated, uh, I've published a blog that I keep updated of my social media statistics, Right, so people can see how many views my YouTube video has received, my YouTube channel has received, and and my Facebook records, and how many views I've achieved in total on Instagram and and um, and Twitter and and all these sort of sites, right? So, anyways. Um, I think that's I think that's quite a lot to go over. Um but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave it for now. And um I'm going to say goodbye and thanks for sticking with me and uh that's cool. Take care.